At first glance, the Nix language looks like some kind of arcane magic. The documentation is dense, it has some weird functional syntax, there's a million CLI commands, and nobody can give you a straight answer about it, like it's some kind of family secret. But you shouldn't give up, because immutable builds are awesome, and once Nix clicks for you, it's as easy as pie. I'm going to tell you right up front what the secret is, then build onto it with some more knowledge, so stay tuned through the whole video, and hopefully by the end, Nix can click for you too. So here's the secret to understanding the Nix language. It doesn't do anything. Let me explain. A Nix file is just an expression. An expression is what other languages call statement. In Nix, this is either a basic value, a compound value, an operator or control structure, or a function. That's it. This means a Nix file can just be a number. A Nix file can just be a list. A Nix file can just be a path. But most Nix files are either attribute sets or functions that return attribute sets. It's what we just called a compound value, a set of other expressions, almost like an object in JavaScript or a dictionary in Python. You can test this yourself by throwing an expression in a file and calling nix instantiate eval file name. This is step one of the nix build chain, boiled down expressions. So if the Nix language doesn't do anything, how does the Nix package manager do stuff? Well, there's a built-in function called derivation. The Nix manual calls this the most important built-in function. It has three required arguments, name, builder, and system. Name is the name of the package. Builder is the build script for the package or another derivation. And system is the name of the architecture to build for. For example, on my MacBook, it's Arch64 Darwin. So this means your Nix file, an expression, can just be a call to this function. When you call nix instantiate against this file, it will create a .drv or derivation file. It'll throw an error for non-derivations like our number or list files, even though they're valid expressions. This derivation file is in nix store, and so are all the other ones. So we can take a look at all the other derivations for other packages, either by printing the file or by using nix show derivation to parse it. And that's step two of the build process, derivations. <laughs> Now that we have a derivation, we can run nix store realize, which will run our build script and copy the output into the store. We've been using two commands here. If we combine instantiation and realization, we get nix build, which will do everything in one command. If we change our builder, we can see that not only does the hash of the derivation change, but our changes are picked up in the output after the build. And that was the final build step, realization. Okay, one last question. What about the weird syntax? How about that let and in thing? That's just a control structure that loads variables from the first expression to the second without returning them. With does the same thing, but destructures the first expression. Rec is just a recursive set so you can reference variables from the same scope. The Nix iceberg goes even deeper, but hopefully this video has helped you derive some understanding. If so, check out grok.computer where we break down advanced software topics. Take it easy.